Julian. Puts up a three. Yes! And a goal! Leave Network. I'm your host, Russ Heltman. And back in the saddle with my co-host, Neil Meyer. Shout out to uh, Ryan Roberts for helping uh, helping complete the show last week as I was on my bachelor party. A ton of fun out in the Poconos, Pennsylvania area. And good fun in the Cincinnati area this weekend. I know I was at Taste of Cincinnati uh, for one day on Memorial Day when we got back from the bachelor party. Neil was enjoying the river a little bit. Start of summer, Neil. We're here, my man. It's uh, It feels good. Uh, everything feels good about summer, except that we are in the uh, really only dead period of Bearcats athletics about to enter. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's been a been a busy few weeks as we've discussed plenty on this show. and We're going to continue to do so today. But yeah, we're now entering that that little dead period. I'm sure we'll have maybe some news break here shortly, maybe within the next week or so, hopefully. But hey, times are rocking right there in Clifton right now. So it's a great time to follow us here on Bearcat Blitz and Bearcats Talk front office news where you can find out Russ and I's work for the front office news and Bearcats Talk as well. So make sure you tune into tune into both of those websites as well. Good plug from Neil. He, of course, of the front office news.com and Bearcats Talk.com. I'm over at Bearcats Talk.com as well, where the news Neil talking about, hopefully the final kind of little cherry on top of the offseason for Cincinnati basketball. It's basically set in stone what we're looking at from that program, except for the replacement for Josh Leffler, who took a head coaching position a few weeks ago, a little over a month ago, as we now record this episode and still waiting for the kind of tactical bench assistant that will be joining Wes Miller's crew. Leffler was more of a analytical kind of coach, a guy who wasn't as involved with the recruiting side of things and uh, was big help. And game to game. I'm back. I think I was system muted me for some reason there, but anyways, I was talking about Josh Leffler replacement, having to figure that out for Josh for West Miller staff. We'll see if that gets announced or leaked or reported in the coming week or so. You'd think try to get that finalized before the midst uh, getting the thick of summer workouts with the entire roster, which is. Looking to be all but finalized. Maybe, Neil, what? We're looking at like a walk-on or two, possibly. That's the only real big uh, big thing happening with this roster moving forward in the next couple months. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a, the biggest priority for Wes Miller and his staff right now, Russ, as you mentioned, is hopefully filling that last assistant role before the midst of off-season workouts come into play. Obviously, off-season workouts have kind of been going on for a little bit now, but the volunteer workouts, at least, it, we had to imagine. But overall, yeah, yeah. the volunteer workouts have been going on for a little bit. But, hey, it's going to come quicker than a lot of people realize now. I know workouts usually typically begin in, what, mid, mid-June, mid roughly? Beginning mid-June, if I had to remember right. But overall, I mean, Russ, they're still looking to fill that one assistant spot. And as you mentioned, Josh Leffler heads to Loyola, Maryland, where he is now the new head coach out there. So he returns to where he started his coaching career out there in Maryland. So overall, he was more the analytical guy for West Miller and this staff, but he was a big key contributor for what the that staff was able to do behind the scenes as well, for those who don't know. No doubt about it. We'll get into the full show after this message from Bad Online and some more messages from our great, great sponsors. It's your number one source for the NBA and NHL playoffs this season. Bad Online has every stat, every matchup, and even live odds while the games are being played. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on the game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our 150 slots games, 150 plus slots games at that. Head to the website today to get in on the action. Don't forget to use promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A B for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. The game starts here. We will start up the thick of this episode of Bearcat Blitz after these messages right here on the Believe Network, presented by Bet Online. Wrapping up 
the basketball offseason on this episode of Bearcat Blitz. I'm your host, Russ Eltman. He's my co-host, Neil Meyer. We'll uh, get to some of the news and notes. As we mentioned, we kind of touched on the assistant waiting game. That's really the big thing left to knock down in terms of kind of totems in the offseason ledger. We'll see how Wes Miller finalizes that final position. I would be I would be pretty surprised. I, I, I'm turning 27 on June 11th. If this has not been reported or announced by that point, I would be very surprised if we do not get something in the next two weeks or so. So keep an eye out for that. And then one other thing that happened, I think kind of in the days that I was out on the um, on the bachelor party trip this past week was CJ Frederick returning officially to the roster this coming season. Neil, you know, we kind of all but knew this was a for it was essentially a formality to get CJ Frederick back in the fold. John Rossman reporting the official return of Frederick. Seems like he was solid enough in off-season workouts that we mentioned they went through in the spring, the voluntary off-season workouts. Seems like he made enough progress with those lower body injuries, with those issues he had throughout the, the entire season that the coaching staff and CJ Frederick himself felt comfortable to say, hey, let's run it back for one more year. I'm strong enough to deserve this roster spot. And if you're the coaching staff, you see enough progress out of that strong talent to make you confident that it's worth taking another shot on CJ Frederick, despite him just through no fault of his own, not coming close to meeting year one expectations in Cincinnati. Yeah, Russ, and it's important that we note that this was basically all but locked down that CJ Frederick was going to be set to return for his final season of eligibility for the most part. Obviously, going through the voluntary workouts, sounds like he is fully healthy from the hamstring injury that kind of lingered throughout the 2023-2024 season. But it's a huge it's a huge addition for Wes Miller and this staff because now with the offseason additions that they have had, bringing in guys like Arrington Page, Dylan Mitchell, Connor Hickman, you now bring back one of the most pure – efficient three-point shooters in all of college basketball and C.J. Frederick, who allows you to do so much more. But from what Ryan and I talked about, for those who really checked out uh, Friday's show last week, was what C.J. Frederick provides on the defensive end that goes unnoticed for the most part. And C.J. Frederick, there was games last year, Russ, right there with John Newman. He looked like one of the best pure on-ball defenders that Cincinnati had at times. Before just John, the, especially in terms of just the mental makeup, mm-hmm. just the experience, it was very clear how much time he spent in high level defensive systems, and especially with how much acumen and how much focus the staff and Wes Miller puts on his defensive cues. It was very evident that a, a guy with the experience of CJ Frederick was a massive addition on that end, and a big reason, Neil, why he was a plus 24.9 overall net rating across 309 total minutes on the floor the best net rating of any Bearcats player in 2023-24. Yeah, and it's worth mentioning, too, that his return, look at the roster makeup, Russ, heading into the second year in the Big 12 compared to year one. Year one, you had two veterans, John Newman, Odio Guama, on the roster, who were your lone two seniors. This year, C.J. Frederick's the only, one of the only, se- the super, the only super senior on this roster, Aziz Bandego is a senior. You have a couple other seniors, but CJ Frederick not only provides the veteran experience, he's been to a couple NCAA tournaments. He's been through it all. And now heading into the 2024, 2025 season, adding his veteran presence to a, on paper, the most talented roster, probably since 2018, 2019, Russ provides so much for this team in terms of leadership, experience, the presence, the veteran presence. C.J. Frederick is going to help this team in a lot more ways than people think on and off the court this season because anytime you can have a veteran presence who's been through a couple NCAA tournament runs with some great teams, I mean, Russ, we talked about that Iowa squad he was on uh, for those two years were probably one of the best squads in the country at the time. Then he goes to Kentucky, plays under Coach Cal. So, I mean, he has the experience right there to come and be one of those, maybe the next John Newman esque kind of guy there in the locker room because we know John Newman. We've covered him for the last few years. We know what kind of leader he was on and off the court, but it's now looking like C.J. Frederick could potentially lean into that John Newman role and be one of the biggest leaders for this team on and off the court heading into this season. 
thousand percent, Neil. And when you just look at the results in March and what Frederick could have maybe added and been the difference in mm-hmm. across these games, Neil, let's start with the first loss of the month back in, uh, or excuse me, not the first loss of the month, first kind of the back half of the season to the front half of the season is what I'm going to go with here. January 31st onward, you lose to West Virginia 69, 65 on the road. We don't think CJ Frederick's shooting and defensive acumen, especially in crunch time there could have made a difference. It definitely could. Same thing with a five point loss at home to Houston. Same thing with the loss to Iowa state. Now I think they still probably lose to Iowa state, even with Frederick. And I think Frederick may have actually coming off the, the injury and played in that game, but or it was either that or the Oklahoma state game, but he wasn't himself and he wasn't in a rhythm by that point. Anyways, may not have made a big difference against Iowa state, but Oklahoma state 80 to 76, another sub five point loss. You get into Baylor, 68-56 in the tournament. You get to Houston, 67-59. I mean, he could have made a big difference in three of the five, three of the four of the six March losses. When you look at the Indiana State game being an 85-81 loss and a team that you could have definitely used his defense against with how well-oiled a machine that Indiana State team was offensively with their sets, and you could have used the shooting against to combat that awesome three-point acumen from the Indiana State uh, Sycamores. But overall, Neil, it's just this team was so close last year that it just felt like they were one player away from breaking through to that NCAA tournament. They lost, what, six? I think it was like seven or eight games by less than eight points. Yep. Yeah. And so it's massive that C.J. Frederick not only got a lot of time to get healthy, but feels confident, feels experienced enough, feels ready to roll enough that he can be a solid part of this roster. And a roster, Neil, that you mentioned probably is the best roster since 2018, 2019. It's definitively the Mm -hmm. best Bearcats team, top to bottom, when you look at these scholarship players that this team has ever had. And what they're at, five, 13 guys right now. These are 13 scholarships. Landon Long and Chase Kirkwood, those were the two walk-ons last year, right, Neil? And they're gone. Correct. And CJ Anthony was also a walk-on as well. Yeah, yeah. So 16 – is it 16 guys you can carry? I, I didn't know that. I thought it was 15. But anyways, we'll see what they do with those walk-on spots. And I'm sure the news will kind of start flooding in, trickling in, I should say, because there's only a few spots left throughout this midsummer months. We'll see how they look. And I'm imagining in summer workouts, we'll see if they get somebody in by then. It felt like two years ago they had Kirkwood in. They got him in about – June. That's usually when they've been announcing the walk-on guys, so I think we'll see something well, one, like that happen. There's already one guaranteed in the incoming class, and that's J.J. Rembert out of North Carolina. That's right. Yeah, that's right, because he signed in the class of 24 yeah, as a walk-on. Already. There you go. So you get a young guy right there. Great, great note. From Neil, as we take a quick break here and get to the most impactful transfer that he added this offseason. We'll get the thoughts from Neil and I. And can this team miss the tournament? Is it possible with this talent miss the tournament they stay relatively healthy? And by relatively healthy, we'll say less than 25 total games missed on the entire scholarship roster. We'll discuss that after these messages on Bearcat Blitz. Bearcat Blitz final segment here. I'm going to go for your host, Russ Elman, my co-host, Neil Meyer. Joining me as always, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcast, wherever you're watching, whatever medium you're watching your YouTube videos on, whether that's the app or that desktop, you can check us out on Talking Cats with Russ Elman there as well. The most impactful transfer of the offseason. It's probably a debate between two guys. No, maybe Neil will make the pay, make the Ayrton Page case here, but I'll leave the floor. I'll give the floor to Neil. Neil, your most impactful transfer, which guy is going to have the biggest impact on this team in 24-25 out of the new phase? Yeah, I think it's definitely worth noting Ayrton Page is very much into consideration for a guy who could have the most impact out of the transfers. Could, could take a big leap in year two. But for me, Russ, I think it's easy to say the most impactful transfer is going to be the – former Texas Longhorn forward, Dylan Mitchell. I mean, just everything he provides to uh, this team 
it's it's going to be tremendous from being able to guard the one through the five at his size, six foot nine, great frame, long, lengthy, physical player, really efficient in the mid range game around the basket. If you can get him there to play the basket, former five star recruit had plenty, plenty of options in the transfer portal, whether it was the likes of Auburn, University of Miami, elects to come here to Cincinnati. I think that's going to be the biggest experience there because Russ, you pair him alongside with Aziz Bandego in the front court. That is probably going to provide a top four rebounding team in the big 12, maybe even top two rebounding there in the big 12. Dylan Mitchell is a great rebounder, loves to crash the glass, but also Aziz Bandiga, uh, Aziz Bandega was one of the top rebounders in all of college basketball last season. And this that's the reason why Cincinnati was a top offensive rebounding team in the country, top five at one point, and one of the best rebounding teams in college basketball as well. So I have to note that, but you bring in Dylan Mitchell to pair alongside Aziz Bandego there in the front court. But Dylan Mitchell can do a lot of different things too. He, like we talk about, he's an elite defender, can guard one through five, can really space the floor, but you're looking down, with his presence there, Russ, there at the four position, it will naturally allow Simas Lukosius and Dan Skillings to kind of play off the ball a little bit, get to their spots. Dan Skillings, we know what he's capable of doing when he can get downhill and attack. He can alter the game on, on the glass as well if he can get to the rim. Offensive rebounding is a big, a big emphasis in Dan Skillings' game as well, but we saw spurts of it last season where Skillings would go off for 25, but Simas Lukosius, Russ, I think this the addition of Dylan Mitchell will allow Simas Lukosius to play more freely like he did towards the end of the season where he was able to get up those five to six three-pointers a game where he was capable of shooting nearly 40, 41% from behind the arc over the last eight games, if I remember right. And I think Fortune. and I think if you allow that, if Simas Lukosius can shoot that well due to the impact that Dylan Mitchell has and really allows Simas Lukosius – Jizzle James, Dan Skillings, whoever might be there in the uh, other three positions to kind of play off the ball a little bit and draw some help for the shooters to get open. I think that's the biggest impact right there. But overall, anytime you can get a guy that can guard one through five, you're in pretty solid hands, if you ask me. Dylan Mitchell, I'm with you, Neil. He's, he is the most impactful transfer and, and for all of the reasons you just laid out there very eloquently. And, and I'm not going to lop on much more because there's not much more to add the versatility is what makes him the most impactful transfer it allows so many other guys to fill into some more comfortable positions and i'm very interested neil to see what this small ball lineup impact can be with mm -hmm. the likes of maybe you go mitchell at the five lukosius at the four skillings at the three jizzle james connor hickman at the one two i mean they're so many different lineup combinations that they can go with. And a guy I just mentioned in that grouping is a guy who I think could potentially be the biggest impact transfer if he can raise his efficiency to a level even higher than last year. And I think that's going to be difficult and why I would have Mitchell above him. But Connor Hickman, I think, has a case here because of his offensive impact, because of, I think, how he could connect a bunch of lineups and keep this offensive afloat, offensive float with his on-ball creation a little bit better than some uh, some of the shooting guards in years past under Wes Miller. So I think Connor Hickman has a small case to be made, but at six foot three, 200 pounds, there's just a little bit less of an impact that he can make on both ends of the floor than the type of impact that I think you're laying out, Neil. So I think Connor Hickman kind of tiered in second group alongside Arrington Page with Dylan Mitchell there as well. But speaking of Arrington Page, I mean, He's got the acumen, the, the recruiting acumen to come in here and really pop off. Maybe it just was not an ideal kind of growth situation for him at USC in year one. We know how Wes Miller has developed talent at, at his time at UNC Greensboro, all the way to his time here, what he did with David DeJulius and helping create a, a strong, strong impact from him, how he helped develop Victor Locken over his time, how he's helped develop Aziz Bandago over the last year and a half. into that list as well. Anders Nolly, what he, what his shot, I mean, what his shot went from at Memphis to UC, it was directly helping him to make an impact this year in the G League and get a boost there for his early professional career. So, a lot to be excited about with this Bearcats roster as we close things out with 
Neil, I'm just if they have got if they stay below 25 total games in this, that's assuming you know a bumper bruise here or there, maybe out of the top five guys, you get three to four games missed total, uh, each guy total for each player's uh, season long tally. I'm just struggling to understand how this team is going to miss the NCAA tournament, given the schedule they're going to be playing, the talent level they're going to have, and the non-conference schedule being, in my opinion, we'll see what the preseason Ken Palm numbers look like in just a couple months, but way, way stronger than the non-conference schedule was last year. Neil, if they have less than 25 total games missed on the roster, I don't see how this team misses the NCAA tournament. To me, the only thing that keeps them out is injuries and a whole lot of them because it's going to take that much injury impact to disintegrate a roster with this much depth. Yeah, no, I'm right there with you, Russ. If they can keep the the injuries under maybe even 20 missed games as a whole for this team. If they yeah, can 25, I think 20 is a good number, Neil. I think 25 then you might be then you might be on the on the end of a major player missing maybe half the season if you have that many games missed and that could throw a wrench in things. But even then, like even if you have a major player miss half the season, you're you're eight, you're legitimately nine players deep in the Big Twelve right now, which is hard to say for any team in the country, mm-hmm. let alone teams in the Big Twelve. Yeah, exactly. And with how much depth that this team has at all the positions, because Russ, we talked about it in the past. Year one in the Big Twelve, they had two true point guards, Day Day Thomas, Jizzle James, and both were playing their first years at uh, the Division One level. Then you go down to Rayvon Griffith redshirting. He doesn't play at all last season. Then you go down to the front court. You had Victor Lockin, Odio Guama, Aziz Bandego. Aziz Bandego goes down with the injury. Vic uh, also gets injured. So both of those guys miss time with injuries. Odio Guama steps up in big, tremendous times. John Newman was fighting through a lot of lingering, tough battles all season. He was banged up at a couple of times. CJ Frederick goes down. So overall, that's the biggest difference this season, Russ, is that you bring in the addition of Connor Hickman. You now have three true point guards. But it's also worth mentioning, Russ, in that category of people missing time last season, we haven't even mentioned Seamus Lukosius. When, yeah, he got he hit dealt, by a car. Yeah, and what he Crazy. dealt with last season. And he still came back and was arguably one of the best players in all of the Big 12 throughout the final two months of the season, roughly. So the depth, that's the biggest thing, Russ. And if they can keep the injuries under – Heck, I might shoot even under 15 missed games as a whole. There's no way this team doesn't make the tournament. No way. I think it's guaranteed that this is the year with how much depth they have. I mean, it's you mentioned it, Russ. It's never easy to have nine or ten guys who are capable of out there going out there and playing significant minutes in the Big 12. I mean, you and I have seen that firsthand from – we saw it in the conference tournament. Well, I did personally up in Kansas City. UCF was running out guys who were playing 34, 35 minutes, the same six, seven guys playing 34, 35 minutes. Oklahoma State, Oklahoma State was doing it. West Virginia was doing it. But overall, Cincinnati now has the option to go out there and play seven or eight guys to where they have that depth, maybe even nine or ten, to where they are able to really put a, maybe put a good minute restriction on these guys, cap them out, because you know the next, next group in is just going to be just as efficient, if not, not too far behind them. So having that depth, is huge heading into year two. Bearcat Blitz, that wraps up today's show. Very high, very high. Vibes very high in Clifton around the Bearcats men's basketball program. And football, it's way there. On its way there. Trending up, I would say, at this point. We haven't talked a lot of football in the past couple of weeks with the transfer portal popping in basketball, but we will get to it. And start doing a full-on deep dive across the entire roster, looking at it ahead of Camp Higher Ground. And we're about a little over 60 days away from Camp Higher Ground getting rolling. Actually, well, no, they're in August. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, a little a little over, yeah, a little over 60 days away. About two months, about? Yep. It's gonna be a lot of fun. For Neil Meyer, I'm Russ Eltman. This has been Bearcat Blitz, presented by Bet Online. <laughs> Seconds left, shot clock off, four point game. DeJulius puts up a three. Yeah!